a very interesting day. Today was the first day in the trial. The trial itself didn't start. The jury selection did. 14 jurors were selected. And luckily, from a journalistic point of view, the publication bans are no longer relevant because they were in place to protect the jury pool from being tainted. So people who would serve on the jury would hear a, a snippet or a fragment of evidence and maybe make up their mind in advance in a prejudicial way. So luckily, things are now reportable. And it was a very interesting day for jury selection. Standing with me now is Chad Williamson. He's a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. He was the lawyer the Rebel News sent down to the Coots Blockade Saloon. He was there in real time giving advice to the truckers, talking to the police, trying to lower the temperature, letting truckers know what to do if they were arrested, reminding them not to get into shenanigans. Well, he's here at the court where he watched this first day with me. Chad, good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you, Ezra. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's great to be back down in uh, southern Alberta. I mean, the weather's nice, and uh, what a crowd earlier today. I mean, uh, lots of support for these guys, obviously. Uh, the You know, the, the carbon tax protests happening yesterday. Lots going on right now. So, uh, and jury selection today. Uh, but this is one of the most crucial aspects of the uh, uh, criminal uh, criminal criminal justice system. Uh, you're, you're so right. I I was talking to some of the team back at our HQ about the drive down, and they were asking me if there was any more carbon tax protests on the streets. Not that I saw, but it was pretty exciting yesterday. That said, there were a ton of police out front here. I counted at least a dozen, and there were. Um, and I, I just had to laugh because the people who are here are friends and family of the accused, children, grandchildren. There's donuts and coffee this morning, right? I mean, these aren't, uh, you know, Antifa guys lighting stuff on fire, you know, throwing things at police. These are moms and dads that live in southern Alberta that are just, uh, you know, wanting to support uh, local people that contribute to the community, really. I mean, I don't know who makes the decision to deploy a dozen or more police and there was police vans what you're going to take away some grandmas in paddy wagons or something there were grandmas here like like it, it, it was it wasn't just a bunch of like punk kids right this is i mean full families down here so yeah i i thought that was very interesting i i have uh, i enjoyed the jury selection process it was sort of exciting to see people it i mean I, I shouldn't say this, but I thought of sort of a game show. Come on now. And you came on down and you went through the questions and you had, and would you be recused and excused or would you be compelled? And some people sort of tried to get out of it and didn't succeed. Others sort of whispered something to the judge and they were let go. It was sort of an exciting thing. Yeah. The jury selection process. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a little bit of a circus, right? Because you get such a, a smattering of, uh, of, of eclectic and diverse people from around the community. And, 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 and I think I, I said to you when we were just standing outside the court, like I, I looked around and I thought this really is Lethbridge. Like this is representative of Lethbridge. We had, you know, some, some old babes in there. We had some really young kids. Well, there, there was a kid there. I would have thought he was in high school. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, there, there, I actually thought that this was the gallery. When I first walked in, I thought it was the gallery for the trial. Like I thought this was just the public watching. Um, and obviously when they're, you know, not letting you anyone else in, but they let me in cause I'm counsel. I thought, oh, wait a sec, this is actually the jury pool. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, what a, what a crazy process this morning. Uh, the questions, I mean, now that the publication ban, uh, has, has been lift, lifted. Um, I mean, I can say that, you know, the, the, what they call challenge for cause. So these are the, this is the process where, uh, the court puts specific questions to a potential jurist to determine whether or not they've got a bias. And even if, if they have a bias, are they still able to deal with and discharge their duty fairly? Um, and you get all sorts of characters, right? This is this is just a big group of group of people from Lethbridge. And you got guys that clearly were just trying to get out of it, right? No excuse, but they're trying to get out of it. You got some poor dude whose final exams were tomorrow. He should have been studying today. And I mean, he went up and he just said, you know, it's, I'm in university, we've got finals tomorrow. And of course he was... Uh, uh, you know, graciously, you know, mercifully let go by the uh, the court. So what what an interesting process. But I remember we we fought for weeks over what the questions would be, right? So, uh, and I mean, it went pretty quick. This was one of the fastest jury selections I've probably ever seen. It was only half a day. 
Yeah. And there were the 12 jurors and, and then two extras, I guess, in case someone, God forbid, gets sick or has to uh, leave for whatever reason. That way they would still have 12 juries to make the decision. That's right. So, yeah. And, and I mean, sometimes you see this. Some people just don't have the Constitution to go three weeks or they get really sick or, um, you know, they're eating the government provided food that, you know, maybe doesn't sit well or, or something. Right. And uh, so so you need a couple backups. Uh, usually, even if you get down below that, you know, that 12, they can usually keep going with, uh, I mean, they've got, you know, they, as long as counsel agree, maybe proceed with 10, but you really do need a fairly large jury so that it's representative of the community at large and, uh, you know, a jury of your peers, right? So, uh, and, and I think, I think uh, there's a chance we could have got that today. There's some jurors that I thought, mm, you know, um, I, I kind of like them. Some jurors I thought, eh, you know, they might not be, um, you know, super into what went down at Coots, but uh, I mean, as well, if, if people can, and, and, and I think people take it real seriously. Like if they, they get a moment in the spotlight where now they're, they're the judge, right? Um, so it's an interesting process. It's hundreds and hundreds of years old. This is what, this is the, really the cornerstone of justice, uh, in, in common law jurisdictions. Um, go ahead. You're so right. You know, the last jury trial I, I sat through now that I think about it, was more than 15 years ago. It was Conrad Black's trial in the south, uh, Southern District of Illinois, Chicago. So you have this member of the House of Lords, this gazillionaire, and who was the jury? Was it a jury of his peers? It most definitely was not demographically, ethnically, economically. I walked into that room in Chicago and I thought, he's done. He's toast. In fact, the prosecution used like picture book images, uh, like big ch- big pictures, like a like a man, words. yeah, like a man with a bag of cash. Because it, I mean, the idea. I mean, I don't know how you have a trial by your peers if you're a member of the House of Lords. Here, I absolutely felt it was. I I, I looked at the fourteen people chosen, and they absolutely were. Lethbridge, working class people, young people, older people. You couldn't really tell who was what just by the look of them. But I have to say, if you're on trial for a political purpose, which is what these protests were, these protests were political in nature. Yeah. They weren't they weren't a bank robbery dressed up as something. There was a political expression. If you're having a political expression that is conservative and populist, do you want to throw your lot in with the elite establishment judge handpicked by a justice minister in Ottawa, or would you rather have your fate to 12 regular folks? And I think it was very wise to go for a jury. Yeah. So it, it, it depends on the nature of the offense, right? If it's what they call a summary in, uh, offense, which is punishable by at most a brief prison sentence. So I don't think you could have a jury for that. You can't. So, and, and that's in provincial court. And it's, it's, I mean, this is Alberta, this is cowboy court and they deal with a lot of really crazy stuff in provincial court. Uh, when you move up to big boy court and throw this one at bench, um, and you've got, you know, I mean, mischief I could, could potentially carry a penalty of up to 10 years in prison. Uh, I don't even frankly think they put rapists in prison for that long or, uh, uh, I mean, you know, drunk drivers that mow somebody down. I mean, you know, it's possible, but frankly, I think most of the sentences are much less than that. You're afforded the opportunity to make a jury election. And that's what we did on day one is we wanted to make sure and especially down here that they'd get a, a jury of their community members not some jury from uh you know metropolitan calgary and that's where the prosecutor wanted to take this didn't he he wanted this as far away from the country mindset if he had his way he would have had this heard in montreal yeah and i, I mean he raised the issue a number of times so what the motivations were i mean i, I guess everyone can draw their own conclusions but you know, there was alleged safety concerns. You know, and I knew it. I was going to mention that. The reason the cops are out here is is because you've got a whiny, thin-skinned prosecutor. His name is Stephen Johnson. I saw him in action before. He's the one who prosecuted Arthur Pavlovsky for giving a sermon. Then was he the prosecutor in Chris Scott in the Whistle Stop Cafe case? No. So that was another guy, Peter McKenzie. Who, okay. Uh, I, I mean, he, he is the, if I'm not mistaken, he's the director of specialized prosecutions in Alberta. Like, he's... Uh, it's my understanding he's the top dog. So to go after Chris Scott, they brought in uh, the best of the best. And I'm just so delighted you won that case, and I'm just so delighted Chris Scott showed courage. So really, we didn't we didn't quite start today. We did everything except for start tomorrow. The trial starts at 10 a.m. Am I right? 
Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, the, you know, the, I, 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 guess, I guess the Crown, they said, well, you know, we could give our opening address today. And the opening address is really important because that's really your, uh, you know, your, your bluster and your passion and uh, a real, you know, distilled essence of what your case is. What, what's really important is to have the defense be able to reply to that right away. So you don't, I don't think you necessarily want to have the crown finish the day with their opening statement and then let the jury go back to mall and have it, have it wide That's right. uh, from the defense. And I think the crown said they weren't ready with their witnesses either. So I, I think in fairness, both sides thought jury selection would take a little longer. Yeah. And, uh, and in most cases it does, right? Because I, I mean, in, in most cases, you got a lot of people either getting out, people expressing bias, people saying, hey, you know, well, I got, I have surgery next month. Or uh, the process just usually takes a lot longer. The jurors were, uh, I mean, the, you know, they just, they, they gave the court the answers that the court wants. They said that they could, uh, you know, discharge their duty fairly and and, and honestly. And, uh, and, and, and I feel like they might be able to. I, I got a pretty good vibe from most of the jurists. Um, uh, you know, whether you agree with uh, the Coots blockade or uh, anything like that, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a true Canadian citizen should be able to discharge their duty, put all that aside, weigh the evidence on its merits, and then render a finding uh, as the trier of fact in this case. And really, what's interesting is normally in provincial court or where you've just got a case that's uh, decided by a judge. He gets to rule on the facts and the law. So you got kind of one guy or gal doing everything. And they're usually senior lawyers or kind of part of the, you know, judicial bureaucracy. What's really neat when you have a jury, and this is just this century old tried and true method. You've got a jury of your peers giving a decision on the facts. And then you've got the, uh, the, the judge there to kind of play referee whenever there's legal, uh, legal issues that arise and people want to uh, get in dust ups over that. So it's uh it's nice to bifurcate those two important aspects of a criminal case and uh I think we're going to see that throughout this uh, throughout this entire trial. You know, the founder of the National Review magazine, I remember he once said he'd rather have the country run by the first 100 names in the Boston phone directory than the than the faculty of Harvard. And I thought there's some wisdom there because there is a common sense with the common people. And and I anyway, I'm excited about it. I I'm going back to our HQ tonight. But we have our reporter, Robert Krejcik, who's going to be covering every single day of the trial. I'll try and come back if I can for some of it. Robert's also going to cover the trial of the Coots 4. And when the trial of Tamara Leach re, uh, restarts, if it does, Robert will be there too. So he really is our go-to expert. And, and I just want to say, and, and this is for the viewers, because I, I mean, people, people go, ah, you know, he's the rebel lawyer and all this sort of stuff. But I actually started this whole journey as just a rebel viewer, a premium subscriber, which I thought was funny. And uh, I've been following uh, Robert's work covering, uh, of course, the Tamara Leach trial. And what's been so apparent to me, and I, I've actually told him this off camera, so he already knows this is no surprise, but um, I am so impressed with uh, his understanding of very, very complex uh, legal issues and his, his ability to convey those in a meaningful way clear and understandable way to rebel viewers. I really think that there's no one better suited um, to be the boots on the ground here to uh, to really report on these very important trials. I think you're right. And he's making friends. I can tell he's already made friends around the courthouse. And uh, I told him he should move to Alberta. And so we're always looking for cooler people, awesome people to move out here. And so if I can convince them, um, I mean, there might not be any rebels left at Ontario. It's funny you see that our last... Our last Ottawa-based reporter, William diaz Bretheon, said he wanted to move to Alberta because of the freedom. And I absolutely support that on a personal level. But he deprived us of our man on the street in Ottawa. And, of course, Robert should seek freedom. But it would also be a loss. I mean, no one wants to work in Ottawa, it sounds <laughs> like. I, I mean, listen, it's a, it's a good experience, but I, I understand. All right, listen, um, thank you so much for watching this. I want to conclude with the two ways you can get involved if you want to. Um, as you know, Rebel News is doing the crowdfunding through the Democracy Fund for all three of the men charged today. Uh, their names are Marco Van Hugenboss, Alex Van Herk, and George Jansen. I've had the chance to get to know all three of them. In fact, Sidney Fizard did a beautiful biographical documentary of the men. It's about 40 minutes long. You can find that on our website. Uh, if you want to chip in to hire to pay for their lawyers, and their lawyers were very active in court today, and I think 
I think we've got a legal dream team. You can do that at coots3.com. So if you go to coots3.com, you can make a contribution. You'll actually get a charitable tax receipt from the Democracy Fund for that. Now, also, Robert Krejcik, as we've just discussed, we're talking about him. He's filming this video, so he's just 10 feet away from me. Um, he flew in from Ottawa, flew to Calgary, drove down. So he's staying here, economy, class, uh, accommodations. It, it's a, it's fairly cheap to, to be in Lethbridge. It's not like New York City. But still, it is going to ultimately cost us thousands of dollars for the airfare, the automobile, the rent, the food, to have a guy based out here the whole time. And if you think that's important journalism, because you don't trust the CBC State Broadcaster, please go to truckertrial.com, truckertrial.com, and that donation will go to our journalism. So there's two ways to help. Go to coots3.com to help cover the lawyers for the men, or go to truckertrial.com to cover Robert's expenses. (laughs) 